and welcome to our Summer of Code. My name is Niall Ridgway. I'm part of the team here at TA Scotland. Now, I've only just learned that my uh, my video was flipped, so I'm pointing away down here. I think it's over here um, that it, it appears. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, today, we're going to be having a look at kind of using the micro bits, uh, using Make Codes and Make Code Arcade, and how you can use these to support your students. How do we get started with block coding? Do not worry if you are a total beginner and you've never even touched the devices, that is absolutely okay. Um, today I'm going to give you a couple of wee places for you to get started, to have a wee look at, and we're also going to be having a look at the device as well. So the first thing I need to show you, I've still got it in the packet, is what a micro bit looks like and what it does. So let's just take it out. There we go. <laughs> a little bit stuck. Okay, so here is my micro bit. Focus in, yes it is, and it should be flipped around properly for you, okay, watching today. So here we have our micro bit. Now, a micro bit um, is this incredible device that's really small and allows you to um, create some incredible uh, pieces of artwork or tools um, using the uh, spaces that are on here. So you've got spaces for crocodile clips down at the bottom. Um, we have on this device here, You've got, a, I'm trying to see backwards, a, an A button and a B button. You've also then got your reset button on the back. You've got micro USB and you've got a space as well for any peripherals you can go into here. Now they can also, um, they've got an accelerometer in there built in. I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, there it is. So it's got accelerometer. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Um, down at the bottom, we've got our pins. We've got a compass and the last one, what does that say? Processor is up at the top there. So there's the processor. So it's a great wee tool for you to have a wee look and work out what uh, what is on a micro bit. It actually tells us all the different parts. Hold on, let's get my face out of this. Um, so you can have a wee look, focus in there. Come on. There we go, okay. So as we said, oh, sorry, um, not just for peripherals, but for battery as well. I forgot to mention that. Um, so what else have we got in there? You've got your antenna up at the top. So if you have, if you want to take part in any of the radio activities, you can actually use the micro bits to message each other and you can use that as your, um, uh, for messaging. Okay, so now that we've had a look at what a micro bit looks like, let's have a look at what you can do with them. So I'm gonna show you just now um, a, a zoomed in version of the micro bit. So if I just share my screen here. Okay, so here I am on the Make Code website. Don't worry, we'll run through this in just a wee second, but I wanna to go to new project. I'm just gonna type in micro bit, hit enter. And from there on the left hand side, you have a virtual micro bit. So don't worry if you've never, if you don't have any at your school, you can use the virtual one here. And if I zoom in a wee bit, there you go. You've got the exact same tools available to you. So you've got your A button, your B button, um, and that just restarts on the back then. Um, that's where you find you're not going to have access to any of these because you don't need them. Um, but if you do put in any tools such as um, like a shake function, so what does that come under as input? shake uh, and let's just go show led um, from there you will get a wee when it loads up there we go we get a wee button to press because obviously we can't shake the virtual one you can press this wee button instead okay so here is a virtual micro bit that you can play around with and you can use with your students so you don't even need to use 
the physical version. Okay, so let's head back to the Make Code website. Now, if you head to, I'm just going to pop it up on the screen because I used it for something else there. So if you head to makecode.microbit.org, from there, you don't have to do this along with me, that's absolutely fine. Um, from there, you're going to find loads of pre-made content for you. So you don't have to start from the beginning. You've got loads of pre-made content. So you've got things like a flashing heart, come up with a name tag, and we will be running through a few of these with students throughout the week. We're going to have little code long sessions going on that will last somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes for the students to take part in. So we will show them exactly what they need to do. Um, so we've got uh, name tags, dice, You've got a love meter in there. I'll not be doing that one. Um, rock, paper, scissors. Yep, we've definitely got that one booked in and um, ready to go. Step counters. You've got guitars, banana keyboards. And honestly, the list goes on of the different things that you could create using the, um, the micro bits. Okay. So now that we're on the page, if we want to create anything, all we need to do, it says new start here, that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to go to flashing heart. And from there, it's going to ask us, do we want to do block coding? Yes. Python or JavaScript, save that for uh, kind of the high school computing. If you don't, if you've never used these coding languages, don't bother with them just now. Start with block coding. Okay. You also then get your wee video lesson to watch and it shows you exactly what you're going to be doing. Okay. I'm going to come off of here because we don't need to watch that. So we're heading to blocks. And from there, it's going to give us our wee kind of introduction. What we're going to do today, we're going to be learning how to use the LEDs to make a flashing heart. Okay, we're going to hit OK, and now it's going to give us, it's going to show us exactly what we need to do. So, what what do we have on the screen here? There's lots of different parts. Up on the top left is the name of what we're creating. Then, as we go through here, we have the different steps that we're going through. So it's going to take us step by step on what we need to do. Then we have immersive reader up at the top. So Immersive Reader will read out for us any of the instructions. And what's great is you can actually translate through Immersive Reader as well. So I can go to Reading Preferences, choose a language, and from there I can choose any language that's listed. There's loads in here. Let's just go for German just now. And it will either translate by word. So when I click on the word, it'll translate it for me, or we can translate the whole document. And from there, I can jump between... German and the original one, okay? So that's how you translate all the instructions to support your learners. I'm gonna turn that off just now. Um, and we're gonna head back. Oh, and if you wanna to listen to it, it's down at the bottom. So, okay, so you can listen back to it and choose your settings. So let's head back. Um, we can head back to the start or we can head next onto the next um, instruction for us. On the top right, you'll notice you've got a little light bulb. And so this is your hint. And we can use the hint to watch little GIFs or videos that show us exactly what we need to do. Okay, this comes in really handy for future, the, the kind of harder coding, uh, because you can just copy exactly what they do in there. Okay, so the first one, place the show LEDs block in the forever block and draw a heart. Now, you'll notice that we have a, a, a very minimal, uh, uh, I guess a taken apart version of all of the blocks. When I click basic, I've only got show LEDs and forever. And when you noticed earlier, when we went into the full screen version of the micro bit, we had hundreds of different options there for us. So as you're going, going through this, it does get rid of everything else that you don't need. Once you get to the end, the next button will turn to finish. And from there you have access to every single block available. Okay. And once all the blocks are available, you can start to customize it, make it your own um, and up your own learning by playing around with them. Okay, so it tells us exactly what to do. On the left hand side, we can hide our virtual micro bit. Uh, we can also download anything. So that what this will do is it's going to download the code that you've created to your device and then you can plug in your, I didn't show you these earlier. So on the micro bit, You've got, uh, when you get your micro bit, you get a, a micro USB cable, which plugs directly into there, like that, okay? And from there, you can plug the USB-A side in to your device, and you can download the code directly to the micro bit, okay? So it's just a case of dragging it over. If you do want to ever use your micro bit um, uh, kind of on the go, then you also have a battery pack that comes with it as well, and that just slots into the top, so I'm just going to line that up, up the top there, 
Okay, and now I can carry my micro bit anywhere I go. And that's going to be useful for step counters. So if you are taking part in the step counter uh, version of the sessions, then it will be useful to have a uh, the, the battery pack. It's not necessary though. Okay, right. Well, so we got, well, we can zoom in and out on the blocks if we need to, which is actually quite useful. So we'll do that today. And we can undo and redo as well. Okay, so... It asks us, place the show LEDs block into the forever block and draw a heart. So we're going to click and we're going to drag the show LEDs, let's zoom out a wee bit again, um, into the forever block and let's make a heart. Okay, so uh, that looks vaguely like a heart, doesn't it? Okay, and, it, and remember we can find out exactly what they've done and what they recommend to us as well. Okay, so there's their heart. Oh, they just copied mine. Okay, perfect, let's hit next. Place another show LEDs block. You can leave it blank and draw what you want, okay? So I place that underneath. Let's just zoom out a wee bit again. So you can click any of this, anywhere in the blank space to move around if you need to. And um, I'm just gonna leave it blank. I take it as or draw what you want. So I'm gonna go for a little heart this time. How do I draw a heart? There we go. It's kind of like a little heart. Okay, so we also have the hint. Okay, so it has the blank one there. Look at the virtual micro bit. You should see the heart and your drawing blank on the other screen. So forever, this is a, like a parent block. So this is, is closed up at the top. When I take these ones out here, you'll notice that at the top, there's got a, like a puzzle piece. It's got a slot and a slot in there um, and not blocked off like these ones are. So I can pull and I can drag in these show LEDs to my forever block. And you'll notice on the left-hand side, when I hit play, it starts to flash my love heart, okay? If you have a micro bit connected, click download and transfer your code. So you just need to drag it onto the USB that's there and watch the hearts flash on your device. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, not gonna do that today, um, but you can absolutely do that, that's no problem. I'm gonna hit finish, and like we mentioned earlier, you now have access to every single one of the um, the, the codes, the, the blocks available. So you can add in different bits to your code, um, and you can uh, kind of up-level your code a little bit. What's really cool is up at the top, if you ever see a student's page that looks like this, then you know that they are in JavaScript up at the top, and all you need to do is click on blocks to head back. So if ever anybody gets stuck and it looks like actual code, so that's in JavaScript, then you just have to click blocks to go back the way. And if I clicked on the drop down, you can also access Python. So you can change between JavaScript and Python code there, okay? On the left-hand side, this is where you can kind of play around with that. But we don't need to know about that today. We just need to know about our block coding. You can rename it. So before you download, you can rename it to whatever you like. Um, and you can also share this um, this code as a link. We're not gonna do that just now. I am going to just come off of here. So I'm happy with how that is. I'm gonna come off, I'm gonna go back to micro bit. And you'll notice up at the top, I've got all of my projects and these just save automatically for me, okay? You can import projects. So if you download any from another, um, any other, uh, web page or from another device and you can put it on here you can import your code really quickly and easily but I am going to show you another point is I'm just going to um, come back to this so micro bit classroom I forgot to get it ready earlier and I'm going to forget if I don't go in now okay so we will come back on to how to share code with your students later on okay so this is the micro bit um, website. We're going to have a wee look now at all of the different blocks of code. So I'm just going to put in blocks of code um, as my name and you can change it to blocks, JavaScript and Python or only these. Just leave it as blocks. Okay. We're now going to hit create and it's going to put us into a brand new empty um, place for us to code. If you need rid of these, you can just click on them once and then hit the delete key. So I'm just going to click and delete. So now they're gone. And now we are going to need to put in our parent blocks. So within basic, we can head down, scroll down, and I'm just going to click on forever and drag that one in. Now within basic, we can show numbers, we can show different icons. So it's kind of like that show LEDs, but within there, when I click and drag that over, um, we have access to all of these pre-created ones. 
Okay, so it might just save you a wee bit of time. So let's just drag that in there. Um, we can show strings. So this is your text. So you can have text in there. So I'm going to change this just to my name for just now, just so that it's, um, you, why not? <laughs> it's like a, like a name tag. Um, as we come down, we can also then have on start, we can add in little pauses as well. So I'm going to put in a wee pause for one second and then it'll show Nile. And then lastly, down at the bottom, this links to your compass, okay? So you can change where a different, um, if you've got an arrow on there pointing, it'll point to where you need it to point to, okay? Within input, so this is where your buttons will come in useful. So you can have on A button, now it doesn't have an on B button, but that's because you can now choose which buttons to press. So A, B, or A plus B. Now, if you go for A plus B and you put something in there, on your virtual micro bit on the left, you'll notice you now get a new button that appears that says A plus B, just because you can't press those two at the same time. So it gives you a new button for you to press. Okay, I'm just gonna pull that back into here. Delete this one. Now, the only reason that they're colored is for your help. They could have them all as the same color, but it's just so that you know where everything comes from and um, what links all in together, okay? So we've got also actions. So on shake, you can have it when the logo is facing up the way or so if I come back to here and just unplug my battery and my USB. So when the logo, there we go. When the logo is facing up the way, so here, that logo there, um, then you can have an action happen when it faces down the way. So when the device is pointing down, when the screen, is facing up, screen is pointing down. When you tilt left, tilt right, when it drops, um, and also when it feels, I think that's force as well, so when you hit it um, with a light force or a heavy force, okay? So there's a few different actions that you can use with the micro bit as well. If I head into more, we get more from within input, um, and you can play around with these. Now, some of them say micro bit V2. The reason for this, and you can find out if it's a V2 or a V1, if it has, can't see it there. There is a, hold on, let me find it. There is a, on the micro bit website, a V2. Now, there is a great picture. Let's see if we can find it here. Maybe not. Anyway, basically the difference is, let's see, is it under teacher resources? Nah, I can't find it straight off. That's their branding. Okay, so there is a great picture that shows you the difference between V1 and V2. V1 is the old one that was around maybe a couple of years ago. V2 came out maybe like two years ago or so. Might be wrong now, but it's the first time I saw them anyway. And the V2 comes with... Um, the ability to add sound, the ability to, is there Bluetooth? I think Bluetooth's on V1 as well. Anyway, there's certainly a difference between V1 and V2. So that's just the versions. Have you got the up-to-date one or the older one? If you've received your Chromebook, eh, not Chromebook, sorry, Microbit in the last couple of years, you should be fine with V2 though, okay? So we then have music, so you can actually add in music to you. So if I click on here and I can play melody, now you can either go to gallery and you can choose one that they've already created, or you can go to editor and you can create your own sounds. Okay. There we go. Okay, so change the tempo, hit play. Okay, and then hit done. And when I hit play on here, it's going to play the sound first. It's then going to show us the icon, take a wee pause, and then show my name in there. Okay? So you can add in music, and you can play all around the different sounds. Okay? You've got the ability to uh, plot your LEDs as well, plot some graphs. Use the radio function. So this is the part up at the top that we use for the antenna. And from here, you can actually send out signals to other devices. Um, here we go, for example, transmitting. You've got your loops in there. So I can pull a loop into here and I can drag all of these and put them into my loop. So now forever, let's change forever to, for example, um, 
on start. So I can drag these in here. So when I hit play, it's going to do all of these things four times. Okay, and you can simply change the number by clicking and typing. Okay, loops are really useful um, and they're going to come into play a lot when you are coding your device. So it's worth getting to play around with the loops and have a wee shot of them. You've then got your logic. So we're going to use these for our kind of ifs and it's good for rock, paper, scissors. So when you do rock, paper, scissors, you're going to have um, a lot of these ifs and else's to play around with. And so I'm just, if I just move this out of the way just now, so if, and from what you can then do is you can change variables. So if I make a variable and call this hand, um, and we're gonna just pull hand into there. So you can actually create your variables and pull them into there. Again, it's a wee bit more advanced, so don't worry about it. At the moment, you just wanna pull these ones in and you can pop them into there, okay? Um, we will cover that in rock, paper, scissors. So it's worth having a little look out for the use of variables later on, okay? I'm just going to delete that block though. Oh, undo, control Z to undo, or you can hit the undo button and drag that back into there. You've then got your maths ones as well. So you can add in different maths blocks and lastly extensions. So these are different kind of different things that you can build using the extras that you can buy. So things like um, you've got uh, like temperature sensors, water sensors, that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna go back just now and then within advanced, you'll see there's loads, okay? <laughs> so those are the blocks that are available. I recommend just start with basic, maybe music um, and then put, okay? So just start with those top three just now as a good place for you to start. So we're already 22 minutes into today. So let's have a shot of creating something else. You can follow along this time. And this is gonna be something that we do with our students. So let's go for name tag. We're gonna to go to blocks. Uh, so tell everybody who you are, show your name in LEDs. So it tells us what to do. Place the show string block into the forever block to repeat it, change the text to your name. So I'm gonna to go to basic, show string. I'm gonna drag that in and I'm gonna change this text to Nile. And then I'm gonna hit next. Look at the simulator and make sure that it shows your name on the screen. Yep, that's all looking good. Hit next. Place more show string blocks to create your own story. So Niall, uh, what do I like? I like pizza and my favorite animal is a hippo. Okay, so now we can create a wee story using the micro bits. And lastly, download that to your device if you need to. So it's just a case of plugging them in hit download and drag that file onto the, the micro bit. It's going to be like a USB. Hit finish. And now we can add in kind of little bits. So I'm going to add, go to basic. I'm going to go to show icon and I'm going to drag that in between my names. So I'm going to go to, let's go to a smiley face. Let's go to basic show icon for pizza. Um, I've got a pizza one there. Yeah, let's go for this triangle here. And lastly, basic show icon and we've got a, an icon there mm, maybe just love heart okay so now you'll notice we've up leveled our name so you could use this with your students on your first day maybe you get a micro bit and that's your name badge and then they can always read your name and they can learn a little bit about you so your name your favorite food and maybe your favorite animal as well and you'll notice that all of that appears on this screen here because i've got it in forever it's always going to repeat it's going to repeat forever um, until you take your batteries out, okay? So that is the very simple way to create your name tag. And we've done that in less than two minutes, less than two minutes, a doddle. You've got this, no problem. Okay, now what happens once you've done a few of these and you know exactly what you're doing and you want to start learning how to code games? Well, there's an amazing website. We've been on Microsoft Make Code. You've also then got Microsoft Make Code Arcade. Now, Make Code Arcade is, has the web address arcades.makecode.com. Okay. And from there, you'll see it's laid out in exactly the same way. Okay. Look at all these games that you can create. And up in the top right, you can sign in. So you don't have to sign in, but you can sign in for these. Now, uh, it says, well, let's try here. So, new, try this. So, I'm just going to see what it looks like. Okay, so show off your creative side with greetings cards, jokes, and short stories. Okay, so we can sign in to save if we want to, but we're not going to. We're just going to go to this first one here. So the block coding. That's great. A greetings card. So make an amazing greetings card in minutes. So it's easy. Uh, these are just the tags associated with it. So I'm going to hit start. 
this one doesn't save automatically for you so you do <coughs> excuse me you do need to sign in if you want to save so follow these quick steps to make greetings cards that you can share with your friends and family okay so let's hit okay so we have here on start now it's a little bit different it's a bit more advanced and on instead of giving us the, the the tips and the instructions at the top it tells us on the left hand side okay so first one we can go back to there so it puts us straight onto number two you've still got a mercy reader if you need it um, and it tells us what to do so from the scene gallery so from within here click on set background image two i'm going to drag that into there and drag it into the empty on start container in the workspace if you need to watch it you can watch this little gif here okay and it's going to show you exactly what to do then we click next and we've also got the hint in the same way that we did on the last one. So let's hit next. Click the empty gray square inside, okay, to open the image editor. And from here, you can draw your own background or choose one from the gallery. So I'm gonna to go to gallery. I'm gonna to go to, what do I like the look of? Lily pads, they look quite nice. Okay, you can draw your own. Okay, so we've done that, perfect. So let's click next. Take a look in the game windows. This is down here in the bottom corner. Do you see the background that you chose? Yes, I do. Okay, so now this is where you can use Make Code Arcade for things like if you use a meow bit or if you use, I'm trying to remember what all the other ones are called. There's alternatives to the meow bit. And so they look kind of like a uh, mix between a um, micro bit and a Game Boy kind of thing. Um, so down on the bottom right hand corner, you can actually create your own games using. Um, make code arcade so yes that looks exactly how we want it so from the carnival car uh, category click and drag add label um, and into the end of on start so it just goes in there uh, change the message to whatever you'd like it to be you are awesome sounds good to me and we want it to be let's put it in the middle of the window okay you can click on the plus if you want to change things like that. I think that's text color is it um, Is it going to work? Oh, there it is. Yes, it does. So if I go full screen, you'll notice you are awesome appears there. So the exact same um, as micro bit, you can go full screen with the virtual one. So let's change the color to red. Make it a bit more, yep, yeah, stand the IT. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to come out of there and we're going to hit next. If you want to change the color, oh, we've already done that. <laughs> We're ahead of the game. Okay, open up scene and drag uh, start screen into the end of on start. Okay, change the effect to whatever you would like. So, hmm, let's go for stars. What's that look like? Oh, so it's got little stars. Nice one. Or let's go for confetti. Full screen, let's see what it looks like. Oh, confetti's nice, I like that one. Or one last, let's go for clouds. Let's see what clouds look like. Okay, so there's our clouds just slowly moving along. And they're going at different paces as well. I quite like that, okay. But I like confetti the most, let's go with confetti. Have we got an effect, can we change? Oh, that take changes the time, so let's just leave that on just now. Okay, hit next. Take a look at the game window. Does the card look the way you want it to? Yes, it does. Let's hit next. Congratulations, you've finished your greetings card. So click done to return to the main skill map page where you can keep going or you can add even more detail. How do we share our card though? So what does it tell us to do? Click done and go back out of the skill map and then look in the lower right corner for the share button. Okay, so let's hit done. I'm not going to sign in just now, but I can now click share and my greetings card. Let's share that project and we can copy that so we can stick it into Teams. If you've got a OneNote that has everything that you are kind of using throughout the year, then you can stick it into your OneNote. You can share it out with, with your families um, wherever you would like to. So what's quite nice is we get a wee QR code as well so people can use their phones and scan the QR code. Okay, so this is Make Code Arcade. It's a little bit more different. It's a little bit trickier, but that's no problem at all. So for example, let's go to a different game. So let's go to um, Chase the Pizza. Okay, so we're gonna go to, back to block coding. Let's keep it nice and simple. Okay, so we're gonna learn how to create a game with two sprites, okay? 
So from here, open the scene text box, text yeah, toolbox, and drag set the color to this. Okay, and then we're going to put it in on start. Let's change it to light blue. I like that light blue. Let's hit next. Set the background color block. Okay, we've done that. Open the sprites. Now you'll notice we've got our steps up at the top. Let's click sprites. Set my sprite into the on start. Okay, this will create a new player character for your game. Hit next. Draw the player character by clicking on the gray square. And now we can either go to gallery to add them in or we can draw them. I'm going to go for a big donut. Okay, let's click done. And let's hit next. Open the controller toolbox and drag move my sprite after here. Okay, this will allow you to move your player sprite. Perfect. Okay, open the sprites toolbox. So we're here. Set my sprite to and click to. Okay, so let's make this to. Oh, it says pizza. Okay, so let's set this one to pizza. Done it in the wrong order. So let's set this one to a person. Um, oh, a ghost. Yeah, that's what I'm having. Fantastic. Okay, so the ghost is trying to yell the pizza. Set in the set my sprite two. So in here, click on to open the menu and select rename. Okay, type in pizza. All lowercase. P I Z Z A. Okay, and then hit OK. In the set pizza block, click on player to open the menu for different sprite kinds. Select food. Okay. <coughs> okay. Click on the grey box for set pizza. Uh, oh, I've done that. Done that already. Okay. Open the sprites toolbox. Here we go. And on sprite overlaps. Okay, into your workspace, you can place this anywhere. Okay, so you'll notice that it's not got the, if I zoom in, it, up at the top and bottom, it's got the straight lines, it doesn't have the jigsaw piece. So this is where you can um, place it anywhere, it doesn't matter where it goes, because it'll load up at the same time, okay? So, great. In the on sprite overlaps, okay, Click on the second player. After other sprite, okay, select food. Okay, we've done that. When our player overlaps with the pizza sprite, let's add a point to our game. Open the info, and then we're gonna go to change score, and then on the overlaps, okay, so add one. Let's set the position for the pizza. Open the sprites, set sprite, position, on the on sprite overlaps workspace, perfect. And then in the set my sprite position, okay, click on the my sprite variable here, okay, and select your pizza, great. Open the math toolbox drawer, so this is taking us a little bit longer, a couple of minutes more, um, and click pick random and then drop it into the X coordinate, set pizza position, and the other, replacing the zero. Okay, so we can go to maths, into here. Okay, hit next. The arcade game screen is 160 by 120. In the first, pick random. Change the maximum value from one to 10. Oh, sorry, from here to 160. And the Y maximum to 120. Okie dokie, we've done that. We're nearly there, two more steps to go. Let's restart our countdown each time. Open the info and click start countdown uh, into the sprite overlaps block. Okay, so into here. And then congratulations, you've completed your game. Use the game simulator. To, okay, so let's try this now. So if I, well, I can use my keyboard and every time, oh, Okay, so it's starts from 10, I have need to eat the pizza. You'll see my up at the top right-hand corner, this is my score, and my little ghost is trying to eat the pizza. So we have already created a game for ourselves. Um, very simply, 19 steps is all, and you've watched me do that in real time. So on the left-hand side, you'll see the buttons that I'm pressing as well. Okay. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, fantastic. So let's just come out of here. 
We're going to hit done and we can download this now if you do have a, a Meowbit or any other game uh, kind of playable uh, machine like that. And you can play it on there. You can download it and stick it onto your Teams as well or into OneNote. So you can click share and then we can share that link. Okay. So that is us finished. So that is Make Code Arcade, an incredible place for you to get started with your block coding. Now, the last place I want to try, oh, let's hit restart. Oh no, wrong one now. Let's come out of here. Let's try this again. Micro bit classroom, leave, what am I doing? Let's just try this again. Okay, here we go. So delete recovered data, fantastic. Okay, so here I am on micro bit classroom. This is still in beta, but it's my one of my favorite things about using the micro bit. So set up your classroom. Every single time you go to start a new activity with your students, you need, you're gonna to need to create a new activity classroom. So for this one, I'm gonna call it name tag, okay? Choose a code editor, so make code, okay? You can choose Python, but it's not gonna be in blocks. And the last one is use temporary local storage. Now this, I leave this ticked on. If it's off and your Wi-Fi goes off or your internet goes down for whatever reason, you're gonna lose everything, okay? So this will just create a very small temporary backup for you, okay? So let's hit launch classroom. And from here, if I go to um, dashboard, your students can now join using this code. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna do that just now, but uh, your students very simply go to microbit.org slash join, type in this name and password, and then down at the bottom, you're gonna see how many students have joined. You can then lock their screens <laughs> so they can't touch anything. From there, you can now go into the editor and you can start to edit and you can put things into place for them. So if it's our name, you can start to build up your own name um, generator, for example. Let's just put in a couple of wee bits of code. It doesn't really matter what goes into here just now, okay? Uh, and from there, we can now click share code with students and everybody who's in that classroom on their page is gonna appear this code. It's amazing, it's fantastic. A really quick way for you to share out code with your students. From there, they can then download that code and you can also upload your own code. So if you've done this previously, it's really simple and easy to upload your own code. You can then hit save for your classroom. So you can download this classroom as an HTML file um, or you can end your session and end session without downloading the file and everything is gone, everything is deleted. You don't need to worry about GDPR or you don't need to worry about names or anything. Um, everything is gone. What's great as well is when your students first sign in and it asks them to put in a name for themselves, you can go in and you can edit that name. So if you would prefer everybody uses nicknames and somebody puts in their real name, you can go in and you can actually change that for them. Um, so Microbit Classroom is a fantastic way for you to work to collaboratively and together with students and they can um, create a bit of code that you've or edit a bit of code that you have already created. So that is kind of our wee overview of the micro bits and using Microsoft make code with the micro bits. Hopefully that has been great. I'm just going to come out here. I'm going to hit remove just now. I've been talking for a long time. Um, if you do have any questions, please do pop them in the comments section uh, below. I would love to kind of help you out and, and work with you on any questions that you've got. If you are on Twitter, oh, it's gonna be flipped again. Um, if you're on Twitter, please do uh, let us know how you've gotten on today or let us know that you've been watching by tagging at TA Scotland and at Niall Ridgeway. In the description for today's video, there's going to be a um, a link for a feedback form. I would really appreciate it if you could just let us know if you've learned something new today, how you found today's session. I know it's been fast, uh, we've covered a lot, but hopefully you now know the basics for using your micro bits. And um, the last thing I guess to say is a wee plug for Team MIEE Scotland. If you're on Twitter, please do uh, follow and, and use the hashtag Team MIEE Scotland. Let us know what you're doing. We would love to see all of your kind of Microsoft-y lessons that you're doing with students. So please do use that hashtag and follow away, see who you recognize and learn from the uh, other educators that are using that hashtag. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm just gonna pre, there we go, get the outro ready. My name is Niall, I'm part of the team here at TA Scotland. Um, is there anything else that I've not covered? 
hopefully that's the basics of block coding for you. I've covered a lot. Please do re rewind, go back and watch a wee bit more. If you need to, you can slow it down, take everything at your own pace. Over the next couple of days, we've got a couple of um, code alongs for your students to join in and you can do them, uh, like you can share the video out with them in other ways as well. So it doesn't have to be live that you join. You can join us the next day or an hour afterwards. Um, it's all gonna be up on YouTube for you to do that. So I think that's everything. Thank you so much again for joining us. I will see you all again soon and hopefully on the code longs that we're doing. So have a good one. Cheers. Bye. Bye.